Well, thank you very much for coming to Tokyo today. My name is Jennifer Shinkai. I'm a diversity and inclusion consultant, a facilitator and coach. And I'm here to find out very much about your story of what's happening in Thailand, what you're doing with the fighters and the kids and how the international community can help you. So why don't you start, Francis, by telling us a little bit about yourself, your journey, how you came to where you are today. My name is Frances Watsana Ya, yeah, and I'm the founder and executive director of War Watsana Gym. It's a grassroots Muay Thai gym located in Northeast Thailand. More specifically, we are located in my husband's village of Gabuang Nok. The gym has been up and running for over four years now, and we have about 20 children in our care that uh, come daily. Some of the children live with us, and uh, a lot of the kids are with us for weekends and holidays and things like that. And how about for you, Scott? Uh, I'm a combat sports photographer, professional uh, photographer out of California. And uh, I've, uh, in relation to Francis here, I, I've been visiting um, Thailand since before the gym started. And I've known Francis from before that time as well. And when she started the gym, I, I began visiting them there and, and uh, also taking photos that, that she can use and right. that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Now for the uninitiated, can you tell us a bit about Muay Thai, what type of fighting it is? I don't really have a big idea. So Muay Thai is a martial art. It is the martial art of Thailand. It is commonly referred to as the art of eight limbs because it allows um, uh, punching, uh, knee strikes, elbow strikes, kicks, push kicks, all of these things. It's a beautiful martial art, uh, but to the untrained eye, a lot of people do find it a little bit intense. In Northeast Thailand, where we live, it is absolutely amazing the social mobility and opportunity that it is providing to these rural communities. Through Muay Thai, a lot of fighters get to travel the world uh, to compete. There's also a lot of government sponsorships and initiatives for university through Muay Thai. So it is a really amazing sport that is embraced by not only the Thai people, but a very large international audience. It's actually under provisional recognition or with the IOC. So it is in the process of becoming, hopefully, an Olympic sport. Awesome. So not for Tokyo 2020, but maybe? No, yeah, not, not for Tokyo 2020, but hopefully, hopefully, I think they're going, they're hoping for the LA Olympics in right. 2024, is that correct? Possibly. <laughs> I, I think that's <laughs> what, what the goal is yeah. for Muay Thai. Right. So it's, it's an amazing sport that has a huge international following outside of Thailand. And wouldn't it be amazing if you could send some of the kids from your gym there? I would, I would absolutely love it. One of the gyms that we sponsor, their daughter is actually in Bangkok as we speak, competing in the world championships. She's a three-time gold medalist and uh, one-time silver medalist. This is her fifth year competing. And the money that she received for her gold medal win, she built her family a house. And, and you know, you photo, take photos of a lot of different uh, sports and uh, different fighting. What is it you like about taking photos of Muay Thai fighters? I, I mean, uh, graphically, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's more action-packed than a lot of other sports. It's, uh, it fills a frame more nicely with the kicks and right. that sort of thing. Um, boxing is, you know, waist up. For the most part, uh, MMA goes to the ground, but uh, Muay Thai is, uh, uh, as, she, as she described it, it's, it's got a beauty to it, and it's, um, yeah, there's a, the, the more you get to know it, there's, there's little details in there that you see that people are expressing in their martial art, and it's right. quite nice. I like it's it. It's great, to, great to, uh, to take photos of. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's, been, yeah it's very rich in that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So you're not originally from Thailand. <laughs> I am not. So what, uh, what's your story of, of how you got to where you are now? So I was born and raised in a small town in British Columbia, Canada, and I wanted to take up boxing. There wasn't a boxing gym. There was very randomly a Muay Thai gym. Right. I had never heard of it. I started when I was 14. I got hooked. I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with the sport. I fell in love with the com camaraderie and the support that I received from my teammates. I finally felt, as a you know a 14-year-old girl, I finally felt you know accepted and secure, and my confidence really increased. So it was a really good thing to come into my life at that time. Everybody said you have to go to Thailand, you have to go to the motherland. So at 19 years old, on a one-way ticket, 
I packed my bags and I showed up in Bangkok alone. I found this gym located in one of Bangkok's uh, slum districts and I just fell in love with the people. Uh, the facilities were beyond meager and definitely probably unhygienic, but <laughs> I just absolutely loved it. I met my husband at the gym and six months later we were married in his village. Wow. Yes. And so my fighting career got <laughs> derailed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when I met my husband, but that's okay. And then you went back to Canada and completed so your education. After uh, my husband and I got married, his mother got quite ill and we headed home to help farm rice and it was a huge eye-opener mm -hmm. for me just about the lack of opportunities in the village and just how truly difficult farming rice is and other than getting the rice you eat there there isn't much uh, incentive for the farmers right. and the costs of farming are very high so a lot of farmers are now in debt just from farming rice so that was a that was a big eye opener for me, mm -hmm. and uh, the work itself was also very physically demanding. So I managed to keep up with it, but um, necess wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do next year. So I said to my husband, I said, I think we need to go back to Canada and uh, you know look at what type of opportunities are available for yourself. I went to university and uh, finished my degree. However, when I finished. Uh, university, um, my husband's mother had passed away a few years uh, before that and he said there's no one caring for my father so we need to go home and take care of my dad. So we left absolutely everything we had. We took uh, at the time our three and a half year old daughter uh, back to the village and moved in with his, in his father's home to take care of him. And when we were uh, talking before uh, the, the filming began, you shared how the, you know, the gym and starting it and helping these kids in the local community wasn't something, you know, you had this grand plan of I'm going to do this yeah. and, and just how it sort of organically grew. Yes. So could you tell a little bit about kind of where it came from and some of the struggles that you've had along the way? Yes. So I have now been doing Muay Thai for 17 years. I can't not do it. So there I was in front of my husband's house, uh, which is a wooden stilt house. And there was a patch of dirt that didn't have uh, any rocks in it. <laughs> so I was training with my old trainer from Bangkok, who actually happens to be from the same village as my husband. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of history there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a way for him to make, you know, a little bit of extra money. I take care of my trainer. So there we are in the front training. Now, Muay Thai, you make noises when you kick right. and punch. Uh, the kids heard me and 20 kids showed up yeah. and they said, can we train? And I said, yeah, sure. And uh, they never left. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's, that's how the gym started. Uh, at the time, my husband was actually working in Malaysia. So again, going back to the lack of employment opportunities in the village, it's a very hard place to be there is elderly and children and those who are unwilling or unable to work also a lot of people who are maybe sick or handicapped will will return home to the village so there aren't a lot of role models for the children there's not a lot going on there you know and things have changed a lot with globalization and things like that that kind of idyllic farm life uh, of how my husband was raised is gone you have to pay for electricity you need to pay for school fees you know, there's a lot more expenses involved. So a lot of people leave and they find work in the city and they send money home to the village. So there's not a lot going on there for the kids and they don't have access to kind of any sort of structured after school activities. So they just came and, and never left. <laughs> um, Scott, what have you noticed sort of, you know, seeing the changes in the gym and seeing the kids as they, um grow and through your photos, what have you observed? Uh, um, from, the, from the beginning, I mean, I've seen uh, the structure of the gym uh, become more organized and more uh, uh, sh more direction, like, like we're here with, with larger plans and that sort of thing. Uh, with that, kids have, uh, like she said, the gym is growing. Kids are attracted to what they're seeing other kids mm -hmm. do. Um, 
they're providing a structure for these kids that's amazing. And, and if you ever visit this environment, it's, it's a different planet. It's, right. it's completely, I'm from Southern California and, and to go visit Francis and Boom, who are my friends I would visit anywhere, um, it, it's, it's completely foreign. It's, it's foreign to even Bangkok, you know, and it's, uh, um, so yeah, to see, to see these kids given this opportunity, it really is a ray of light in a dark spot. And it's, um, uh, yeah, it's very gratifying to see the kids grow in it. Right, and they have that structure, and they have the, um, you were talking about sort of discipline and role models. Um, can you tell us about sort of some of the success stories of the kids in the village and, and in your gym specifically? So we have about 20 kids at the gym and I would say uh, 10 of them compete in Muay Thai and the other 10 just come for training. My husband, he also is a competitive runner in his spare time. So um, we have one kid at the gym and he's been training with us since the very beginning, but he has absolutely no in inclination to compete, but he's really into running. And so with my husband's guidance and some donated running shoes, he ran his first 10K race and placed second place for his school. Wow. Yeah, so that was really good. And so I think one of our biggest success stories would be a 15-year-old bat. He is being raised by his elderly aunt, and it is a tough, tough situation. He is together with four other children whose parents aren't in the picture for a variety of reasons. And he's been at our gym since day one. He was a very strong-willed and stubborn child. <laughs> and a lot of people in the village, you know, they would tease him and say, you're not going to amount to anything. Like, why are you even trying? And uh, he is now a champion in the sport. He has been scouted by the number one promotion company in the country. He bought his aunt her very first washing machine. And um, for my husband and I, he's just a safe, happy, healthy kid who's not drinking and not doing drugs. And I think the biggest thing, let me try to compose myself for this. Um, I think the biggest thing um, that that Bat does for not only my husband and I but for the kids is his hope and his tenacious spirit is leading the way for all the other children that are under our care and it's really been amazing to see that hope in him that that wasn't there you know when he first came to the gym and it's not it's unfortunately not something you see a lot in the village is this hope and so this young boy Bat He's been competing now for four years. His career is, he's doing amazing. But, but more so than that is, is the hope. Right. He believes in his future. He believes in himself. He has opportunities. He has options. He's also making money, saving money, right. taking care of himself, helping take care of his aunt. And he's leading the way for the other children at the gym because he is you know, I guess, quote unquote, he's our golden boy, essentially. Everything that my husband hope and believe and dream for these kids, he's embodying all of that. And he's, again, just this kid from the village who was walking around one day, you know, kicking up dirt, digging snails. And here he is now leading the way for all of these, all of these children. And the work that you and your husband have done have, you know, created those opportunities for him. Of course, it takes yes. him and his commitment. Yes to do that, but you know, you've created the yes. space, you've created the opportunities, yes. given him the structure and support. Yes. It's really and so amazing. Bat lives with us and he has for quite a few years now. So I take take him to school. Uh, we make sure all of the children at our gym go to school. That is something very important. Mm -hmm. And we help cover school fees, uniforms, all of those type of things. So Bat, he has been living with us and we definitely view him as uh, as our son. He's got a very special place in our hearts. Um, and I think that Francis is very humble mm -hmm. and probably finds it quite difficult to talk about what an amazing role model um, she and her husband are for the people in the village. So can you big up Francis and yeah, say what's so I, amazing I, about what they're doing? I agree. So I, I think what they prov I, there's a lot of talk of Muay Thai. There's a lot of passion connected to it. And there's definitely a lot of opportunity that Muay Thai provides um, 
the, the kids, uh, but what they are providing, I think, is much more than that. They're providing um, uh, not just day-to-day -day activities, which is a ton, you know, and uh, like driving to school, which I've, you know, I've been in the car and it's like half the day, it feels like. And, uh, and there's many kids that they have a truck and it's packed with kids in the back, it's packed with kids inside. There's a kid, you know, I, I'm, I'm squeezed against the wall because there's kids in there. And, uh, uh, but there's that, there's, and, and we're, we're all packed in there and there's smiles and there's laughter and they spread out the fruit. There's bags of fruit being passed around and the kids eat, are eating that. And um, there's so many details uh, for things they're providing um, uh, that, yeah, I don't. Uh, you, you, she does need to be boosted up. Uh, Boom as a role model for for the, the females and and the males. I mean, uh, he's he's an amazing individual. You know, is, uh, uh, who comes from a rough background as well, and he's made it. He's made it out, and he's he's been around the world uh, with Muay Thai as well. And um, but uh, but yeah, between the two, they're outstanding individuals and role models for for kids and. France is having adopt the culture in a profound way that, that is very difficult to describe if you don't see her in the environment. Right. Uh, but yeah, speaking the language that's uh, my wife, who's Thai, uh, doesn't understand completely. So it's <laughs> she's she's a very unique individual. So you really, even through yourself, right? You're showing people that just because you know you're born in this village, you don't need to stay there all your life. Yes. And there's so many different opportunities for you out there in the world. And Muay Thai, is, was a, it was a path for you to this life. Right? It was a path for me to this life. It, it was a path for my husband to this life. As Scott mentioned, my husband, you know, he grew up without running water. He grew up without electricity. He grew up collecting and drinking rainwater. And now he's traveled the world yeah. all because of Muay Thai. So it's an incredible, incredible sport. And the opportunities that are there for these children uh, it's very heartwarming and it's very optimistic and, and that hope. They really need that hope. And I think that that's really paramount to what we're doing. Beyond that, we have a lot of kids at the gym that are just there to have fun. Kids like structure. Kids like activities. So to participate in a structured activity where you have adult role models there, you know, I don't want to use necessarily the word controlling, but monitoring the environment. You know, along with my husband and I, we also have a trainer at the gym that comes and helps, and his expertise is absolutely amazing in the sport. So you just have these kids that come and they participate on the daily run. Yeah. And they do their sit-ups, and they do their push-ups, and they feel healthy because they're exercising, and they're in just a very safe, happy, healthy environment. So even beyond the opportunities that the sport can provide. There's also just the day-to-day -day element for the children that come to our gym because they just want to be included in something. And especially for a lot of the, the young girls, uh, a lot of their parents or caregivers, they really want them to learn self-defense, feel strong, be confident, be part of a community. You know, it's, it's just a very, a sense of, you know, the sense of community, it really can't be underestimated what it can do uh, for these children and their confidence and their just personal well-being to be part of that kind of environment as well too. So we're kind of like this hybrid community center that goes beyond Muay Thai. Obviously with me being a Canadian and having people like Scott come visit the gym on a regular basis, the kids are exposed to English language, they're exposed to different cultures and uh, that's something really amazing for a village that you know still has dirt roads. <laughs> yeah, if I could add to, I mean, I think, I think also, Francis is dealing with a lot of kids that have uh, come from trauma backgrounds and, and things like that. So they're 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 getting these kids with sort of a, a latent energy that they're turning into a passion for these positive things. You know, I, I wouldn't call it the YMCA, but it's um, the. They are definitely providing guidance, safe activities, fun activities. Um, next to the ring is other stuff to do. You know, they've, they've got games and things, badminton court. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's there's... not just about sort of creating hardened fighters. Who exactly. Go, right? yeah, the, that's... Kids, the kids come and they do their homework at the gym. Right. So going back to what I said about how in the village you're left with a lot of elderly people and children, grandparents in Northeast Thailand, a lot of them can't read. 
So they're not able to help their grandkids with their schoolwork. So at my gym, once training's done, we pull out the school books, the older kids help the younger kids. Amazing. So it's really just, it's beyond like the, the martial arts itself. Yes. It's about community and creating opportunities for them. Yes, and, and again, well, that is obviously extremely important to us to have these children have opportunities, just keeping them safe, keeping them away from drugs and alcohol, giving them something to do that's good for their bodies and good yes. for their minds, just, just living in the moment and what we can provide for them in the moment as well, I think is very, very important. But all of these things don't happen for free. Yes. And um, I know that you are outgrowing your apartment. You're outgrowing, maybe yes. we need a, a new <laughs> truck as well. Um, so what are, what are the things that you, you have a vision for how you want to kind of grow um, your community and how do you want to support that? Can you tell us a bit about that? So currently our gym is structured like this. Uh, again, we did not intend to start this gym. It started itself. So we've just been kind of going with the flow. We rent out two apartments in a nearby town where most of the kids go to school and we have outgrown them. Us, along with our children and our many, many cats and dogs that we have rescued, we are, you know, uh, what, cro starting to cross a little bit of a line with our landlord. As much as they love us and are very tolerant of us, we're taking up a lot of space. Mm -hmm and commuting to the gym daily because the gym is in the village where we have land from my husband's father the amount we're spending on rent and gas alone is it's a lot it's a lot of driving we take the kids home every night we take them to school so we do have monthly donors who are fundamental to what we're doing here and we have people from all over the world some of them give us ten dollars a month fifty dollars a month twenty dollars a month and all that together, for the most part, covers the main operational costs of the gym. I work and my husband works and we are putting absolutely everything we have into this gym. But I don't see it being sustainable. It is a lot of pressure and it is a lot of pressure on myself, I think as well, too, providing for so many children and their families. And I feel that we are kind of a little bit on thin ice here. It's it's tough. So we have a plan to uh, build a house so that we can not only house the children that we care for, but be able to take in more children as well. Right. And we would like to uh, also build a few small rooms to start to accommodate for all the amazing people that have been messaging us that want to come and hang out with us. So Muay Thai is a huge industry in Thailand and there are foreigners that come from all over the world every single day to enter the country to train Muay Thai. And now that the gym is doing so well, I feel confident that we could handle a few visitors a month to help offset some of the operational costs. And so our goal now is to build a house and to do that, we need some help. And do you have a, a fundraising goal, what you need for this house? We have a fundraising goal. Uh, it is set at 100,000 Canadian, which okay. I think is about 75,000 US dollars. Right. So it is, it is up there, we are aware of that. But what this fundraising goal will do is far more than build a house for these children. It's about creating self-sustainability and it's about bringing something amazing to the local community as well too, because with us being able to you know, accept visitors from around the world, I, I think that it's gonna have a huge positive impact on the community. Northeast Thailand is the most underdeveloped and impoverished area of Thailand. So we are working in a community, like I mentioned, that doesn't have a lot of opportunities. And with the residents mainly being rice farmers, this year we experienced one of our worst droughts in history and uh, the majority of farmers lost their entire crops. So I think having something like this in the community, it's gonna have a rippling effect. Of course, my children are my priority, but I think that it will again just help local business. Uh, I hope to have people volunteering at the local schools, you know, even just things like uh, 
the, the fruit seller, the noodle lady, you know, I think it'll be really good for the community if we can achieve this. And I think for my children as well too, I just want them to feel safe yeah. and secure mm -hmm. because I think that living in an apartment, it's, there's always going to be this feeling kind of in the back of your head, you know, what if, what if Francis leaves us? There's nothing there for them. And I want them to just have that security. And also just for my husband and I, if we can provide this for the children, it will give us a little bit more flexibility. We won't be driving hours on hours a day, <laughs> shuttling the kids to school and here and there. There'll definitely still be some driving, but it'll just take a lot of pressure off us. And I think we'll be able to even give these kids even more. So as an individual or as a corporate donor, I'd be able to be contributing to something very grassroots, but which is having you know, direct impact on yes. these children's daily life. But also, if you're able to build this house and support, the, it leads out into the bigger community, right? Because yes. if people also can come and visit, they can join uh, your gym as an overseas visitor. Yes. And that's another way of giving as well, right? Yes. So to come as a visitor, sure. to um, learn, the, you know, maybe from scratch or maybe improve your uh, Mai Tai skill, but then also you're bringing something, right? Like Scott, when you go, as Francis had mentioned, you know, you're bringing this view that there's more than this village to the world and it is an option for you. You know, if I can add to the, the thing that's uh, interesting too is, is to see, so she's, I mean, Francis is how she looks and she's in the middle of this village and she's highly respected as she's mm -hmm. walking, you, it's, it's, a bit unbelievable to see her. Um, whether we're 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 in Muay Thai is very male dominated, right. you know. And there's and to see her walk into an arena and I mean the, the ocean doesn't part, but I mean there's there's <laughs> there are people that definitely take notice that like Mali, right. what what she's called there, um, is here, you know. And 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 it's not. And I think the the high regard comes from her actions in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, what she's doing for the community. Um, I, I have gone with her on trips to spread the wealth, so to speak, and, and things that she's getting that, um, yeah, she could store and use for herself later, she's not doing. She's spreading out because there's an immediate need everywhere. And it's, right. uh, and she's making, you know, a, a big effort to address that. Right. And that spreads her thin and that's why we're here. And, and how would you say that, you know, being involved with this gym and, and with this community, you know, as a, as a third party, how has that impacted your life? Uh, I mean, I, I, I come from a, a poor background, you know, we were homeless at one point. But, uh, but anyway, so I, I feel like, you know, she's satisfying that in me to address children as well, you know, so in a way, I'm, I'm helping the kid I was once, you know, yeah. but, but in a way, um, I don't know, they could, like I mentioned to her before, she could be into knitting and I'd probably come document that or something. You know, I, I, I love Francis and Boom and, and uh, the fact that they're doing this, just I, I, I love them more and I, I, I'm happy to be a part of it and anything I can do, you know, I, I'm proud to do. And so what can people do now to get involved? What's the step we should make after we finish watching this video? Well, anyone that has any questions or would just like to talk to me, I'm more than happy to uh, answer your emails, get on the phone. You know, if you have any ideas or any uh, outside support that you'd like to offer, please contact us. And what's the best way to contact you? We have a website, warwatthana.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and uh, we also, I have you know, my email, I guess, I don't know if I would be giving that out here, but <laughs> <laughs> I can I can share it, no problem. You know, I, I think our website is probably the most direct way to contact us, and I'm pretty on top of those things. We have a GoFundMe page up and running, and uh, anyone that wants to make a con contribution there, it's, it's open, it's ready to go. If we have anyone that's interested in becoming a corporate donor, we would love to accommodate that, and we would love to talk to you about that, and there would... Uh, we would definitely like to uh, commemorate any any sort of corporate donations or large donations that we get uh, with with something at the gym. So please, please contact us. Anyone that is interested in this, any questions you have whatsoever, check out our website, send me a message. I'd love to talk to you. But uh, in the meantime, 
we have our GoFundMe page up and running, uh, accepting donations. And the target is 100,000 Canadian. So if anybody wants to just donate that whole 100,000, that's fine. More than more fine. Than, more than welcome. And I can, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I need one of my kids here to like snap yeah. me out of it and be like, no crying at no the crying. gym. No crying in the gym. No crying yeah. in the gym. Um, I just want to say to anyone who would like to donate or who has already donated, thank you. And uh, my husband and I are completely dedicated to these children and this project. And we can guarantee you that the money will go to a good cause. It is going directly into the community. There's absolutely no overhead costs involved. Every penny we receive goes right into the community. And it's it's not it's not about, you know, giving these children hands out hand handouts or anything like that. You know, all of our children, whether they're professional athletes or not, they're sweeping. They're doing dishes. You're working them hard, right? We work them hard, we take care of them, they're learning English, they're good kids. Yeah. They're really, really good kids, and my husband and I, we just want to provide a permanent, stable environment for them and create self-sustainability for this project. Thank you so much. Now, do you have uh, a message in Thai, maybe to the camera, for your kids? Thai Moi Wawatana Lao Su To Pai Naka. That's just like, we're going to do this together. Thai Moi Wawatana Lao Su To Pai Naka. ว่าวัฒนะว่าวัฒนะว่าวัฒนะว่าวัฒนะเป็นครอบครัวของผมครับครอบครัวของหนูค่ะว่าวัฒนะคือครอบครัวของผมครับ